Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I recently talked to an old friend who is also the local village idiot in town. It's been a while, so I forgot his name, and when I did, he was so mad, he screamed at me and tried to punch me. Luckily, I barely dodged his punch, but all was forgiven when he slipped out of an anteater. Patrick Starr, everybody's favorite Spongebob character who became a least favorite character and now is a favorite again. Patrick Starr is Spongebob's best friend and the second main character of the show and also the comic relief character. He's a sea star who lives under a rock who's not very smart but makes up for it for his countless funny moments and instant YouTube memes. Today, I thought I'd talk about Patrick Starr in the show as a whole. Specifically, talk about his development, his character as a whole throughout the entire show, give some facts, and mention some episodes with him in the starring role, whether they're good or not. First, let's cover a bit of background. When the creator Steven Hillenburg was teaching marine biology at the Orange County Marine Institute and designed his comic book, The Inner Tidal Zone, he designed a prototype, realistic looking starfish character. In 1987, he left the Institute to pursue a career in animation. He worked on Rocco's Modern Life during his run. After it ended, Martin Olsen suggested making a cartoon out of his comic book, so Hillenburg started fleshing out the characters. Patrick was conceived as a starfish to embody the character's nature. Hillenburg said that while starfish look dumb and slow, they are actually active and aggressive, just like Patrick. I'm not a starfish. Patrick is voiced by Bill Fagerbaki, who has also appeared in other shows like Coach and How I Met Your Mother. Now, let's talk about Patrick's character. Patrick is an overweight, tubby pink sea star who has black eyes with red spots all over his body who wears light green shorts with purple flowers on them. In season 1, his eyebrows were a lighter black and shaped like a sideways M. Starting with season 2, his eyebrows were a regular black and now shaped like a Z. This slight design change might have been due to season 1 using cell animation. Starting with season 2, they used digital ink and paint animation. Although he doesn't have a visible nose or ears, there's a running gag throughout the series indicating he can smell or hear just fine despite it also being said that he doesn't have any of those. Everybody knows Patrick is not the most colorful crayon in the box, but he is also good natured. Spongebob is not smart either, but Patrick is clearly the less responsible and mannerly of the two. In addition to stupidity, he can also be short tempered and can start to behave very psychopath like, and it can be for a number of reasons, but most notably when he's really upset about something. One of his most famous examples is in episode 32, Valentine's Day. When he doesn't get the Valentine's Day gift Spongebob promised him, he goes on a rampage and destroys the Valentine's Day carnival. His anger can also be driven by jealousy. For example, in episode 343, Patrick Man, Patrick is jealous about Spongebob's job and special workers had and complains about it. Sometimes he acts selfishly for his own needs. In episode 175, Sing a Song with Patrick, he takes Spongebob's $100 and uses it to enter a contest, acknowledging that he took someone else's money without their approval. He also has an infamous mean streak, which is much more apparent in the seasons after the Spongebob Squarepants movie. While it's occurred throughout the show, he shows remorse sometimes, and others he doesn't. A true jerkwad example is in episode 254, Yours, Mine, and Mine. When Spongebob buys a Krabby Pitty meal for him and Patrick to share, Patrick eats all the food, and when Mr. Krabs makes a toy, Patrick hogs it all for himself and refuses to share it with Spongebob. He also has a hypocritical side. In episode 347, Little Yellow Book, he is among the customers who laugh when Squidward reads Spongebob's diary out loud, but later throws tomatoes at Squidward and scolding him for reading it. However, sometimes when he acts mean, he has good intentions behind it. In episode 338, The Good Krabby Name, Spongebob wears a Krabby Patty costume to promote the Krusty Krab. Patrick thinks Spongebob had been eaten by a giant Krabby Patty, so he beats up Spongebob in the costume, trying to save his best friend's life. Despite all of these mean actions and more I can't mention, he is still a nice person and is shown to genuinely care about his friends. Now, let's discuss Patrick's intelligence. Patrick is known for not just his stupidity, but for living under a rock, literally, being very lazy and eating anything. He also has a bad memory and can forget things almost immediately. Like me! Wait, what was I talking about? 
His stupidity seems to vary from time to time. Sometimes he's so stupid he doesn't know even the most simple things, and other times he can appear to be much smarter than other people give him credit for, and occasionally can surprise them. An example of his extreme stupidity is episode 286, You Don't Know Sponge, where he doesn't remember even the most simple things about his best friend Spongebob. On the opposite end of the spectrum, in episode 120, The Lost Mattress, Patrick was able to see through some of Squidward's actions, such as, when Squidward gives them the code name Wormbait, Patrick figures out why that's their code name before Spongebob does. In episode 244, Tentacle Vision, when Squidward asks Patrick how dumb he is, he even says, it varies. In terms of interests, he and Spongebob share a lot of the same interests like ice cream, jellyfishing, bubble blowing, various childlike activities, and glove world. He also loves eating and just sitting around doing nothing. Here's a brief history of Patrick's characterization. In the beginning, he was dim-witted, but a good friend. He is the comic relief character who may not always do the right thing, but always has good intentions. He's lazy and eats a lot, and can go crazy at times. On some occasions, he's shown some sign of intelligence. After the Spongebob Squarepants movie, the smart shine showed up sporadically, and his stupidity felt more frustrating than funny at times. While he did have a mean side throughout the series, it's much more apparent during this time, especially towards Spongebob. After the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water, his voice got deeper and his character started to improve. He was much nicer to Spongebob, but still showed some really mean moments. Less than season 6, but more than season 1. Next, here are just some random facts about Patrick. Patrick has an innie belly button and his favorite color is aquamarine. Patrick has arachnophobia, meaning he's afraid of spiders. Patrick weighs 2 ounces and is 6 centimeters long, just like a real life starfish. Patrick is the only citizen of Bikini Bottom who can eat Plankton's chum and handle it. In season 1, there was a running gag where he falls off his rock. Patrick Starr and Gary the Snail are first cousins. Patrick is right-handed. Patrick impersonated a doctor twice and both had bad results. Patrick lives under a rock, while in real life, living under a rock means a lack of knowledge and current events or phenomena. Patrick has worked for both the Krusty Krab and the Chum Bucket. Patrick has actually passed his driver's exam, something Spongebob hasn't done on his own. The names of Patrick's mom and dad are Margie and Herb, respectively. He can fly. Him having a sense of smell is inconsistent. Sometimes he can smell, and other times he wishes he has a nose. Despite having black eyes, these two frames from these episodes show him with green eyes. He's pink. Finally, let's talk about a few episodes with Patrick in the lead. A famous example is episode 46, Big Pink Loser. Patrick wants an award because he can't do anything right, and Spongebob helps him accomplish this desire. This episode is beloved by many because of Patrick's craziness and dynamics. There are so many funny moments in this episode, such as Patrick's failed attempts to do anything at the Krusty Krab, the jar and lid scene, and when he's copying Spongebob, but most of all is the no, this is Patrick scene. In episode 183, Pat No Pay, Patrick has to work at the Krusty Krab in order to pay for his Krabby Patties. When he works this time, he doesn't do anything right, but here it's a lot more frustrating due to his actions. In Big Pink Loser, Spongebob asks Patrick to sweep, Patrick ends up sweeping with the broom upside down. In Pat No Pay, Mr. Krabs has Patrick load ice cube trays in a barrel, Patrick breaks the freezer by throwing it at the barrel. I thought this was funny as a kid, and while I still enjoy it, I can see why more people prefer something like the sweeping from Big Pink Loser. It's the Stupid Town comment from Nat. In episode 234, No Hat for Pat, Patrick's upset over Spongebob's Krusty Krab hat because Spongebob's known for that and Patrick doesn't have anything going for him. He tries to earn the hat while messing up, and when he gets it, he keeps falling and Mr. Krabs turns him into an attraction. Spongebob can tell Patrick's getting hurt, but Patrick wants the hat because he works hard just to keep it. 
After a mishap with Squidward, Mr. Krabs fires Patrick, leaving him upset, but SpongeBob cheers him up. Despite Patrick's mean streak during this time, he's written here in a very dynamic way that makes him likable and sympathetic. In episode 269, The Monster Who Came to Bikini Bottom, most of the episode is literally just Patrick mucking around with a monster. That's pretty much it. It just drags on and on and doesn't do anything that gives the episode any kind of high stakes. Sure, the police show up, but it's not till the second half of the episode, and there is a brief chase, and that's it. In episode 314, Pet Sitter Pad, Patrick looks after Gary while Spongebob visits his grandma for her birthday. This is one of the worst episodes of the entire show. Patrick treats Gary horribly in this episode. He eats Gary's food, making Gary starve. To give him a bath, he sprays Gary with a hose and pours a box of soap flakes to get him clean. To dry him off, he uses a hair dryer because he couldn't find any salt and uses the next best thing. While salt kills snails, a hair dryer does the second worst thing to a snail. In episode 408, Patrick's Coupon, Patrick finds a coupon for ice cream and plans on using it to buy an ice cream for Spongebob. Patrick's motives are to do something kind for his best friend, and ends up going through much more than he expects, such as Mr. Krabs trying to steal his coupon and having a battle with the Ice Cream King upon discovering the coupon is expired. In episode 480, Shell Games, Patrick's rock this whole time was the shell of a sea turtle who overslept for 30 years straight. Patrick's stubborn and refuses to leave the rock and makes things harder for Tony, the sea turtle, since he doesn't believe the rock was actually Tony's shell. Some of Patrick's actions can get increasingly irritating, which eventually leads to a fight between Patrick and Tony until it breaks and they both end up losing their home. So those were a few episodes with Patrick as a lead, but far from all of them. As I've shown, episodes with Patrick as a lead can vary quite a bit in terms of quality and fan reception. But he has also created some of the most iconic memes throughout the series, such as Who you callin' Pinhead? I don't get it. This surprised face Is mayonnaise an instrument? Push it somewhere else! Things are gonna get crazy! No! This is Patrick! It's not my wallet! And very many more. There has been talk about Patrick, and Spongebob for that matter, being gay after a few jokes from some episodes in the earliest seasons. This especially blew up after a video from 2005 of Spongebob promoting diversity and tolerance went around the internet. However, this is not true. They were considered to be asexual by the creator, and if there were any homosexual jokes, they were used because the writers thought they were funny. And they were! Patrick is also the voice of Sans from Undertale. No way! There are plans to have a spin-off focused on him. No way? Undertale was created by Toby Fox and an audio clip of Patrick from episode 44, Something Smells, is used as Sans' voice. Listen. Maybe it's the way you're dressed. Maybe it may, 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 may. See? I know. I was shocked too. The spin-off was announced in 2020 and would have Patrick be a talk show host. Personally, I feel that could be a good concept for just a regular episode, but making a show out of it? I don't think so. Spin-offs focused on the comic relief characters don't do well. I think what really sells the popularity of Patrick is the very talented voice actor, Bill Fagerbakke. His amazing voice made Patrick so memeable throughout the years. Despite not all Patrick episodes being good and his character fluctuating throughout the years, he's still a fan favorite character and one of the best characters, not just in the Spongebob Squarepants series, but one of the most iconic cartoon characters of all time, just like Spongebob himself. Patrick is an amazing character and it's one of the reasons the show became as popular as it is. Of course, not every episode focused on him has been amazing, but I know how to fix that issue. Just have the surprise Patrick face appear whenever an episode might turn out bad. That'll improve any episode with Patrick in it, no matter what.